Next, we change pace a bit and in a segment devoted to the meeting of art and science, we feature a conversation between one of this year's Nobel laureates in chemistry, Emmanuel Charpentier, and concert pianist Igor Levitt. Igor is here in the studio with us, having given last night's Nobel Prize concert, while Emmanuel Charpentier is, speaks to us from her office in Berlin. Moderator is Julien Sirat, Professor of Clinical Integrative Physiology at Karolinska Institutet. Well, I've been really looking forward to this conversation about art and science. And I think there are a lot of commonalities between what you both do. I mean, you both start out by learning fundamentals and training on the basics, but there's another big aspect of what you do in your world of art and your world of science on a creative level. And I was wondering if we could start the discussion around the basics and the creativity and how you bring both of those aspects into your work. And Emmanuel, maybe we could start with you on just a reflection about how you balance the basics and creativity. Yeah, I think in, in science, I believe this is the same in uh, arts because I was, uh, I studied uh, classical piano and also classical dance when I was younger. Uh, the methodology is, uh, is, is very important. So this is part of the basics. So when you're a biologist, and this means uh, good laboratory practice, good scientific practice, the knowledge, how to analyze the knowledge. Um, and so, and, and it's years of actually of, of knowledge uh, acquisition, <laughs> I shall say it. Um, having said this, after, uh, this is where the creativity can can come in. Uh, however, I believe that at least in, in my case as a scientist, creativity is also a methodological process because it's, uh, it's, it's associated to the repetitive work, to the hard work. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's about testing hypotheses, uh, taking a step back, yet having the global uh, picture a lot of questioning, uh, being ready to see failure, to come back. So it's uh, always with regard to also including observation, pause, reconsideration, reinvention. And uh, so all those aspects that are, I think, uh, important as a, as a part of creativity. So Igor, in your field, you spend years and years studying the basics, but there's also this real creative aspect. And I perhaps you can recognize some of what Emmanuel is is reflecting on as well, even in, in the arts. First of all, it's great to be here with you and congratulations. <laughs> um, Thank you. I can very much relate to that. I mean, it is, I mean, it's, you know, in order to, to be free and in order to be as creative as you, as you possibly can, a full bouquet of things must be fulfilled. You have to, you spoke about knowledge. Let's just call it language. As better you know the language, as freer you can deal with it and you can play with it if you don't know the the language if you're always in the reactive mode rather than the active mode you can't you can't play 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 with it right and so you spend years and years and years and years of learning and understanding i i always tell my students um when you play the piano it's not just the act the act of pressing down the key consciously it is also the conscious act of releasing the key. So you, you act and you react, right? You breathe in, you breathe out. And um, it is very easy to forget that. Um, but what is absolutely crucial is to understand that, in, at least with music, yes, there were great composers in the past who wrote great pieces and great masterpieces, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We all know that. But without us, the, the artists who are alive today, in the year 2020, literally music would not exist, music from the past. So we can talk about the great, you know, the great composers of the past. If a musician doesn't press down a key, that's what you hear. Absolutely nothing. And so we are the enablers. We fill you know, this information we have on the piece of paper with life, if this is not an invitation to creativity, I don't know what, what else can possibly be. Mm 
Well, Emmanuel, you're nodding to that, so you recognize that even probably in science. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, surely I recognize this in science. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the basics, we understand you can teach the basics. How do you teach the creativity? And it's so vital to what you're both doing and your successes. So maybe, Emmanuel, how do you think you can foster that creativity? Yeah, I, I think what is important in science is to, to uh, understand that one should not be too much bound to the dogma. So one has to be ready to, to the unexpected. And I guess uh, in the case of CRISPR, you know, for example, when uh, we published the, the first article of the story in, in Nature, I had not met my collaborators. So this was maybe helpful because we were not influenced and we were free to, to think <laughs> the way we wanted. It was also a new field of, of research. And so it was important to know what the others had done. So I remember that I read all papers of my colleagues and I knew them by heart. But it was about to figure out what could be novel uh, in, in the system that I was working and what was not shown by others. So it, one has to have the global picture and then one needs also to be uncertain in a way because the uncertainty allows to have an hypothesis, a plan A, B and C. Uh, then we do uh, an experiment, maybe uh, we are not in the right direction, we switch. So this is what uh, uh, the way I approached, uh, the, in general, a project together with my students and postdocs. So it, it's important to, to always take a step back, come back. Um, as Igor mentioned, when it, it, it's important to, to, to do this in a, in a free mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you feel that you're, you're mm -hmm. free to go from left to right. The goal is important, the global picture, the goal, but um, it's, it involves a lot of failure. I guess a composer is the same or, or someone who, um, you know, like Igor, a pianist who will try to reproduce a, a piece. It's a lot of, you know, try and fail and yeah. <laughs> well, the way I will describe when it. You, when you said, um, let go of the dogma, Igor reacted and... Um, you know, what was your reaction when you heard her say that? Because you recognize that. Well, one of my, if not my greatest house god, the composer, pianist, thinker, writer, Ferruccio Busoni. Busoni wrote that the aim, the purpose, and in a way the job description of a creative person is to set up your own rules and not to follow, just to follow by the rules of the others. Mm -hmm. And if you just follow the rules made by others, you literally stop being creative and you stop being a creator and then he goes on and says and once you set up a certain rule and once you realize oh here's a rule i achieved something break it apart immediately and start anew because because this is sort of the other the other kind of death of creativity is the acceptance of a status quo and um and both in in, in a creative sense, in an artistic sense, but also, to be honest, in a um, in a day in my daily life, in my idea, what what sort of political togetherness and what societal questions are, I think the single most one of the most dangerous things is to accept status quo. And if if anything, this time we live in teaches us that there is no such thing as status quo, right? And so um, you asked before, how do you teach that? Mm -hmm just remind day after day after day time and again you are the creator without you there is no music without you there is silence mm -hmm. without you there is no society mm -hmm. the world is there for you to shape it do it mm -hmm. and emmanuel do, you know in science we get critiqued all the time and we also get a lot of um, negatives how do you persevere over that and holding on to some of these unusual ideas just to go forward yeah, it is true. I think this is most likely what the public does not know, really. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a strange, uh, let's say, field where we, we are constantly judged and constantly criticized and, and uh, you know, rarely uh, awarded, I have to say, for what we are doing. I, I think what I try also to tell my students and postdocs is that, you know, it, it's very, very critical that they 
they foster this kind of, you know, self-satisfaction <laughs> and positiviz- positivism that uh, allow them to cope with, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, with the criticisms and, and the judgments. And this is really important. And I guess uh, this is maybe what is uh, challenging in a creative uh, setting because uh, for sure uh, the, the creativity does not come like this right away. Mm-hmm. So you have to go to these phases where maybe you wonder where you go and whether you will achieve something. And, you know, and then at some point you see the light, uh, you know, at the end of the tunnel. So I think, uh, but it's important to, to be self, you know, self happy, you know, happy about oneself. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to come to the end of this dialogue. But the one thing I recognize in both of you is the conviction and belief and the ability to move beyond the dogmas and see what's out there on the horizons. So thank you both for this dialogue. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.